My name is Robin Bennett. I'm one of the co-founders of The Dog Gurus, Susan Briggs over there on the other panel, and she's the other co-founder of The Dog Gurus. The Dog Gurus is a pet care business consulting and staff training program. So we've worked in the pet industry for, I think last time we added it up, it was over 50 years combined. Yeah. And we have been in the pet industry for years and years, individually owning our own companies, and now we own The Dog Gurus together. So we are happy to have you here. I'm going to turn it over to Susan, who's going to introduce Samantha while I bring her up on screen. Yeah. So, you know, those of you that are sitting out there watching our Facebook lives and that follow us, um, that's what Samantha's done for a long time. I remember seeing her little hello, I'm here over in the um, sidebars for a long time. And so we're super excited to have Samantha Palia with us actually as a guest. So welcome, Samantha. That's so true too. Yeah. Samantha, we've seen you a lot of times just in our Facebook lives or in our group, just commenting or talking about what you're doing. And we are always like, oh my God, it's so cool what she's doing. So that's what happens. You do really cool things. And then we come and talk I, to you about them. So. I know because I saw Samantha, I guess a couple, two or three weeks ago at the IBPSA conference in Florida. And she was just so excited to share with me what she's done with enrichment in her business and specific, specific, uh, specifically in her grooming area that she got me all excited. And I'm like, okay, you have got to share what you're doing. So Samantha, why don't you let everybody know just a little bit about your background in grooming and your business, and then I'm going to kick off and get you started. Hi, I am Samantha Pallia, and I have been grooming for 27 years. I have owned my dog grooming facility for 21 years. I opened in 2000. I was 21 years old. Uh, so so you I had to have been really young. <laughs> because you still are. <laughs> when people were going out to bars in college, I was running a business very hard. You That's know? awesome. I did not have a playbook. I wish I knew you guys like way back then because... So many mistakes I, I come to trial and error. I would have avoided if I had the dog guru. So uh, this is like so amazing for me. And I want to thank both Susan and Robin for having me on. But uh, yeah, so I was a competitor uh, in the industry. I've been a mentor, a teacher, business owner. I've mentored across the nation. I mentor in my shop. I can do continued education still in the industry. So I'm always present in the industry. And so the thing about it is this, I've seen a lot of trends and I've seen a lot of the ways that the dog industry is involved in, in the grooming world. And it's, it used to be when I started 21 years ago, it was definitely more of like the groom, groom, get those dogs, get them in. It, just, you got to do it in bathroom break, lunch break. What's that? And it's so, it's, it, it sounds funny, but it's true. And like every dog, you got to work and get these dogs. And so now I've been in business for 27 years and things are starting to evolve and they're starting to evolve in a positive way. And a lot of things are changing to try and avoid burnout and trying to get quality grooms and get paid for your grooms because it's a very demanding job to have mentally, emotionally, physically, it really is. And burnout even to this day exists. And as far as I know, there is no cure for it, but we can definitely help it along. And so with the enrichment grooming, I was on your March Madness last year. And you guys were talking about enrichment daycare and, and just game, the games you guys play and the things you do. And I really remember I was sitting there and this is when you guys were doing those challenges. Like you got to find a way to make more revenue and all that good stuff. And which I love personally, but anyways, I thought there's gotta be a way to it, incorporate this enrichment basis into my grooming. The good thing is there is a big way and, and it's not even expensive and it's a way to make more money and it's a way to help your groomers. It's a great way to help the pets in your care, your clients. I am so passionate about this and I'm excited. I was telling Robin and Susan, I think I can talk like two, three, four hours about this and I'm so excited about it. One of the things, Samantha, that I love about what you just said a minute ago was that you were, and we, Susan and I, a lot of times start our conferences and we start our webinars. And we, a lot of times we start any kind of thing that we are teaching with, look, have an open mind. If it doesn't pertain exactly to you, 
figure out how it can, how it, how you can adapt it. And so that was exactly what you did. Cause we were talking a lot about how you can do enrichment in daycare and how you can do enrichment in lodging and how you can add activities to some of those services and how you can go and be a pet sitter and do some enrichment in people's homes. And you're like, Hey, I'm going to, instead of saying they're talking all about daycares and I'm a groomer and that doesn't pertain to me, you took the ball and said, okay, how can I do it for grooming? And I love that because that's what every business owner should be doing, figuring out what is the trend in society, how can it benefit my business? And then, like you said, you found a solution that's helping your business, your dogs, your clients. Like, it's awesome. So what? tell us a little bit about what as the benefits to enrichment, adding enrichment to grooming. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the activities and things that you've done to oh. add and add the enrichment. Sounds good. So first I want to start out with a great saying that I actually came across and I think I adapted it to my own motto and it's enrichment isn't about keeping the dog busy for five minutes. It's about creating an environment that promotes mental well-being. And oh, right there, I feel that's just such a powerful statement mm -hmm. because in our grooming, in our daycares, in our boarding, what, whatever we're doing for these pets, we should remember that they are emotional and they have emotions and they think they have the mental component along with me being physically inclined and give them that haircut. Our thing at the shop is we're going beyond the haircut and I'm going to tell you how, and I'm going to tell you why. So who, what pets does this benefit? The great thing is it benefits all pets, dogs and cats in your facility, it benefits they all have emotions, they all have stress, they all have all those components that can stress out a dog or a cat that can lead to injuries or unpleasantries, bites for the groomer. So this can, older dogs, so it really can benefit all pets in your facility, okay? And what it does is gonna create a positive experience for your pet. So you might have a dog that comes into your facility and they're a puppy and they have no idea who you are and they have no idea what's gonna happen. But they walk in and they hear a bunch of barking noises or a bunch of loud dryers or whatever's going on at the minute, phone ringing. And this puppy is just so overwhelmed and overstimulated from the beginning. So bringing, giving them an enrichment activity to do, and you can either do it before or during their groom, their bath, while they're just waiting for their services to be done, it's gonna calm that brain down and let them know like it's okay. And that can be anything from a cuddle time to a, or a licky mat or even just a little toy. It, it really depends on what's going to motivate that dog and what's going to make that dog feel better. So that's one of them. Older dogs, we had a, we have an older dog staying with us. Well, his mom dropped him off the other day and there happened to be a snuffle mat down on the ground. And this, and this dog is very, like very old. He's got that snuffle mat and he is in there for hours. And we were just laughing and talking. So here's we have this old dog that you know is beyond years. And he was just content just being in the groom shop. He was busy and he was happy. He was really happy. And then it got the girls laughing and got us laughing. The owner was like, where can I get one of those snuffle mats? And she's, I got to get one of those snuffle mats. So right there, we had a connection with the dog, your employees, and the owner. And it made the whole environment more positive right off the bat and that's what we want we want these pets come into our facility to feel that positivity and and then they're going to feel comfort in and they're going to feel calm down about it and they're going to just feel like this is a okay place to be we have dogs that come to us that may have had a bad experience somewhere else they may have had a bad experience even at home we've seen that where owners take the scissors or clippers and oops, I cut my dog or whatever. And before you know it, like this dog is terrified of clippers and scissors. You can start promoting that positivity training or even positive environment during the groom to make them less scared. And yes, is this going to take a few minutes to find out what works for them and what's going to make them happy or calm? It might, but it takes a lot less time than fighting a dog that's trying to bite you, trying to come off the table. So for me, it's a win-win solution for us and the pet in our care. Samantha, you made a great point because even at our facility, we had dogs that loved to come for daycare and lodging, but you'd start heading them back into our groom spa room, the brakes would come on. 
And I wish we had, and we did try to take time and do stuff, but we didn't ever really incorporate like the whole enrichment like you have. Um, and it just dawned on me, wow, that'd been great if they wouldn't have been scared to come into the grooming center too. So mm -hmm. what things have you started with that you found that work well? If you have a dog that doesn't even want to come in to the grooming area, what have you found that works? One of the first things that you, you mean when they're coming into the actual shop or going back into the groom area, because sometimes that's two totally different. Yeah, let's, <laughs> you both, whichever one you want to focus on first. Okay, so when they're coming into the shop, and of course you have those pet parents are like, I don't know why my dog is so scared. They're usually not scared, and then you feel like it's it's not yeah. me. You know? So a lot of time it's just the way you you talk to the pet and approach the pet. And you can even have, with the parent's permission, because, of course, anytime you're going to give their dog a treat of any kind, you want to make sure that you get parental consent. You want to know if they're allergic to anything like that. But you can have a couple of treats in your pocket or even like a squeaky toy. We find that those dogs like those Kong Wubbas, those, mm -hmm. those things. They love those. And even, you know, and that just puts on that good, hello, I'm here and I'm a good person and I'm fine and you're comfortable. And they really do see that when you're approaching them in a positive way, instead of looking at them like, oh man, this dog, he's going to be bad. And don't you, you got to get that mindset out. You got to have this dog I can relate to. I can make this a good, a good positive time for him. And, as, and I really do feel like when you approach it, your way of approaching the dog is a lot different than if you got that negative mindset. Mindset. So that's number one. Now, and if it's trying to get them to the back, we usually have the parents leave because we don't have that separation anxiety. And again, what we do is if it seems like there's a lot of noises, we'll try to muffle the sounds and we just try to play with them. And we just try to make it, we don't want to be pulling a dog back there when they're on their breaks. So you want that to be their decision to come to the back and you want them to be confident. And you might just get a few steps and then it's a boy or a squeak or a little treat, something like that. Sometimes you can coax them in with coax them in with that peanut butter licky mat. That's a really good one too. They love that as well. So those are just little things you can do during the grooming, during the bath. We've been using T Touch, which is a you know, oh, that's a great idea. Yes, I don't want to say it's pet massage therapy because no, no. that in a lot of states have regulations. We're not saying we do that. We use T Touch, which is some compression techniques, light, gentle, and the dogs, first of all, you're engaging with that pet during, the, they are just getting your full attention. You're not on your cell phone texting. You're not checking emails. You're not wondering your friends do. And they know they can feel that your attention's on them and it relaxes them. And it just sets that tone for your groom. It just sets awesome. that whole like calm mental component to it. And it's great. You know what I mean? I had a dog that came in and it was the first time and he had, I don't, he was just scared. He was shaking. He was a little, a pit bull, bulldog, I'm sorry. And he was just so scared. And I was like, I'm going to take care of this dog because I just want to try. And I did that tea touch on him and he walked out with the wiggle butt. He was excited. <laughs> it, it was the best feeling seeing the scared dog that was shaking walk out with just joy in his heart. And you can just see when I was done with his bath, he actually looked like he was smiling. I actually got a video of it. If anyone wants to see it, you can post it. It's, it's great. Let me tell you. You know what it reminds me of is when I go get my hair cut and some play, and I have somebody now that I use all the time, but when I was moved out here and was jumping around trying to find somebody, you're wondering, is my haircut's going to be any good when it's a brand new person? But I would get my hair washed and those some salons they just do that extra massage on your head <laughs> yeah it's like a silly thing but i love that and it's only i wish sometimes i'm like i could just go in there and have that that's what it reminds me of when you're saying to try to do some tea touch because it's not that you're already touching the dog doing the bath just like my salon person is washing my hair and touching my head but then when she just stops and it becomes a different type of touch i think we notice that i think dogs notice that and T touch, I think, can be a really powerful way of connecting with the dogs physically. So I love yeah. that you're using that. Yeah. And if anyone's yeah. not familiar with T touch, you can Google it or there's books that can show you how to do it. It is not hard to do. And there's several different techniques. So I think that's awesome. So that's one of the ways. And then, like I said, we use the snuffle mats. Snuffle mats are probably the most popular right now. 
the, we start out with leaky mats as when we are doing our beta testing and everything, our pilot to see, but the snuffle mats are really doing great. And, and those things are really great when they're waiting in between services to even get started or between their bath and their groom. Because first of all, peanut butter, a lot of people have concern that the peanut butter is messy and they don't want to have to rewash the face, which I understand. But if you get just those training treats or uh, liver treats or anything like that, and you just crumble them up, it actually takes them a little while. And some of them don't want to give up the, the snuffle mat. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to give it up. And you can even bring that onto the table. I have a dog that I hand strip. And this dog, I've been working with her. I've been her only groomer. I've done generations and generations of her family's pets. Okay. And so she's coming to me. And like I said, I've, I've hand stripped their other terriers and stuff like that. This dog almost hit me in tears one day because she just was not having it. And she was biting at me. And it just got to the point I, I felt very defeated. I I felt disappointment because I was going to have to call the owner and say, I can't do your, this, your pet. She's not comfortable and I'm going to get hurt. She's going to get hurt. And it was really a, a bad feeling to have. I've been grooming 27 years and I have turned away very few dogs in, in my career. And, and since this is a family that I've known for probably a good probably 15, 18 years, I've been grooming their pets. You know, I was like, I'm going to try something. So at that time I took a box cause that's all I had. And I put the licky mat with the peanut butter in there. I'm like, Hey, whatever, this doesn't work. I literally got to groom that whole entire dog. And every time she comes in, I lessen the treats. I lessen it, the things. And sometimes I got to change it. Sometimes I'm like, okay, let's try this. But I can groom that entire dog without getting bit, without me getting hurt, without her getting hurt. I didn't turn my clients away. And it's really rewarding because she's learning that this isn't so scary and this isn't so bad, which is awesome. So there is a lot to be said that you can use these tools to use it almost like, like a grooming training program for puppies or aggressive dogs or anything like that. And it, it really works. Yeah. And I love that because that I know what, when we have a dog where it's snarling or growling or trying to bite, like we get upset because we're like, I'm just trying to help you, but that's stressing the dog too. So mm -hmm. the fact that now the dog is happily eating and looking for those treats, I think it's a better experience for you. It's a better experience for the dog. And so I think that should be everybody's goal is to help dogs be able to be comfortable do having their having a grooming done. So mm -hmm. I love that. I was going to ask you, Samantha, how, how do you incorporate this in terms of two things? One is in terms of your marketing, but two is, mm -hmm. do you do this with every dog or is it an add on service or do you just raise your prices and you say, this is the way I groom as an overall marketing strategy? Like, how do you incorporate all of that? Okay. So when we first started piling it and, and we were trying out, of course, we just were testing the waters. We were, we start out by adding it as an additional service and we would give people options yeah. that they wanted the licky mat, the snuff, whatever they wanted. Um, but with that said, the more we're doing it, the more we're finding that it's even the little things, like if a dog is overstimulated, you take them on that little bit of a walk to destimulate them to get them to come down a little bit. That's actually a form of enrichment. Or if you're taking them in the back and you're doing their bath and you're getting the massage, that's in a form of enrichment. There, I had, there's times that we send somebody in the back just to talk to the dog and be like, that's a form of enrichment. So we do, we incorporate it into our everyday group. We do what the dog needs is what we do. But here's the thing. We do have enrichment activities that we do offer to our clients for an additional fee. And if the grooming takes us longer and and if it means i don't want to say it takes us longer but we actually price ourselves higher because we are doing this and no other shop around us are i don't know any other grooming shop i've been to a couple uh groom shows i put it on a couple groom groups i don't know anybody else doing this type of of program so our whole website we're an enrichment based grooming center now is what we are and i am no longer a That's dog awesome. groomer i am no longer a dog groomer I am an enrichment stylist. And oh, I love that. That's we awesome. Are, we are all enrichment stylists because 
we give enrichment, but we still give a good haircut. And we don't want people thinking that we don't give a good haircut and that we do without respect. So we, I came up with, I'm an enrichment stylist now. And because I know there's three ways you can actually go about this. You can have your prices higher because you are an enrichment based grooming center. And we can talk about how you can become that and what you can do for marketing and everything like that. Because we did our website, our Facebook, we've been, I did Facebook, uh, you know, like Facebook where I go and talk to my clients and they're super excited about that. We got little report cards done. You really, and it's simple stuff. It's nothing that's going to be hard, but it really shows that you're about the dog. And not that you're not going to give a good haircut. We don't want to say, oh, you can do a bad haircut. I'm not promoting that either. But what I'm saying is it's more than a haircut. It's going to be honest, mental, physical, emotional. And we got to consider this for all the pets. And once I feel dog groomers can really coalesce it and think, I really think that they're going to have better experiences with these dogs. Um, so you can do, like I said, you can do the additive. You can just add it in. Um, you can do really either. It's it's whatever works for your shop, basically. I thought I was going to do it as an as an, just an additive. Just, oh, it will help me because you guys want me to come up with a new revenue source. So that was my revenue source. <laughs> and then once I saw the benefits to it and I was piling it, I was doing it and everything. I was like, this is more than just about the money. Yes, money is important. And yes, it's going to get to your bottom line. But for me, it's more about we're going to make more money, too, because we're going to be able to keep more pets in our facility. We won't be turning away pets. We're going to have less injuries to groomers less injuries to dogs. Our marketing is going to, is going to send us, which are, it has our marketing is like off the rails right now with our, we're like number one on everything with Google ads and everything like that. And people really like the thought that you are not just sticking the dog in the cage and they're sitting there for three to four hours or however, and they're, and it removes the guilt from them dropping their pet off and, oh, my dog's in a cage and stuff like that. They really, you form this family bond with them and that is going to keep referrals coming in and continued co customers. So overall, you're going to bring in more money. So Samantha, so, one thing when you introduce new things to your team, there can be pushback and resistance. How did you find like your bathers and your groomers? How have they responded to this? Maybe initially and then where they are now. I'm going to sound really bad when I said this, but because I'm people are going to be envious. I am so lucky because my team have, has been with me for such a long time and I have a really good team around me that's open to ideas. They are a group that continues education in the grooming world as well. So this was just another continuing education program, but they love it. When I tell you like they enjoy being a part of it and it helps them in their daily work too. It makes them just as happy as the dogs. When they get to play with the dog, it relieves that stress of every day of groom, 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 groom. You know what I mean? And we do photos and they like doing little photos with little pictures look cute. They get just as much joy out of it as, as the dogs do. So again, it's a win-win for your salon. It's creating an environment of positivity. And really, isn't that what we should have when we're dealing with clients, dogs, and it really should be an environment of, of positivity. And it's sad because I belong on a lot of grooming groups and daily I read, whether it's business owners, groomers, not so much bathers, because I don't think they've gotten into the grooming part of it as much. They're burnt out, they're exhausted, mm -hmm. and they're fighting with this dog. And I always just want to be like, hey, do the enrichment grooming, because it really I does help. It, it will help you. You'll stop getting bit and you'll stop getting beat up. And your back will stop getting thrown out. And this is all stuff that I've dealt with. I've been grooming a long time. I have dealt with getting bit real bad. I've been hospitalized over a cat. I've thrown my back out. I have literally experienced this. Again, I wish I would have came up with this 27 years ago. <laughs> I'm sure I you guys 21 years ago. Because my life would have been a whole lot easier. <laughs> Let me tell you. So, so I do. One of the things you mentioned about, and we talked to daycare and lodging especially. Uh, facilities about this to set your base standard of care, and which mm -hmm. is sound is like what you did when you were first like, oh, we can add these as add on activities. But then you were like, wait a minute, there's a certain mm -hmm. level base standard of some of this that just makes sense day in and day out, which I love. But then you have that ability to add on. But you did also mention it takes more time. And I was actually going to ask this question, but Jamie 
asked it as well. So she was saying it takes away the number of dogs you're able to um, groom in a day. So have you seen any effect on that? And how does that work in terms of being able to still get a certain number of grooms in? No, actually we have not. If anything, I find it saves time because mm. like I told you, I was, I hate to use the word fighting with the dog because it wasn't like I was boxing the dog myself, but the, I had this aggressive dog on my table. I was not productive at all. on getting anywhere with this dog. I was trying and all I was doing is getting upset on the verge of tears. It took me literally what, a minute or two to get the licky mat, put some peanut butter on it, put it on a stand, and I got to groom the dog all the way. And if you have a, in a place where you have the ref, the freezer, we don't, but if you have a freezer, refrigerator, you can have that all set up with the con toys or the licky mats. You can have that all done for you. If you have a, a bather, you can put that into their job description or a receptionist. Usually groomers, if you have a bather, you have a few minutes to do it. Just get it going. And if you, if your pets are waiting in the crate, it's not taken away from the groom because you're not even, you're not even grooming the pet. And for me, when I see an overstimulated dog, especially labs on my groomer's tables and they're, the dog's going wild. And I'm like, take the dog off and walk them back and forth. Let's calm them down. It might just take three, four or five minutes. It's going to take less time than them trying to get the dog's nails, trying to brush them and they're dancing all around. Plus it's going to reduce injury to both of them. For me, it's safer and it's just, it's not, it doesn't take that much more time for, so for my staff, it works. Okay. And Jamie, so that was actually my question. I thought Jamie was asking it. Jamie was actually oh, saying, cool. I think that, but that is good to know because I think that is probably the biggest thing that I have heard people mention Anytime I have ever talked about, let's do things for individual dogs to help them with grooming. I've always heard that pushback. So I love that it actually is not the case. It's actually saving your time. But I think what Jamie was trying to say, so clarify me if this is wrong, Jamie. She was actually saying now, because you're working with those dogs, you actually have a stronger relationship with the dog mm -hmm. and the pet parent because you know that dog's individual needs, what that dog needs. So instead of saying, oh, I've got eight dogs to groom today or seven dogs to groom today, you're like, I'm grooming Jack and I'm grooming Billy and I'm right. grooming Ido and whatever. And right. I think that probably is definitely true. Especially I think if you are communicating all of what you're doing to the pet parents, I would think they would love what's happening because like you said, it they get a dog that looks nice back but they also know that dog hasn't just been put in a crate all day and they aren't feeling bad for leaving, dropping it off all day or whatever. So right. I definitely think that's the case. And let me, and let me ask the viewer something, because this is really something important that I feel. If you were a pet parent and you dropped off your dog somewhere and they came out and they had a stunning haircut, but they came back and they were nervous, had diarrhea, weren't acting the same, didn't want to go back next time you brought them. Wouldn't that start, even though the haircut was just simply fabulous, wouldn't you have some maybe second thoughts or, huh, did something happen? For me, I would rather have my job. I want a nice haircut. I'm paying for a quality service. You want that? But I think that overall the haircut, you have to look at your dog's actions and how they are when they're getting picked up. Nothing is better like when you pick up your kid from daycare and they're like excited and I love preschool and I had so much fun and then you won't feel so guilty next time they go because they love it. And that's what I'm saying. Like this is creating such a positive, it's like a chain reaction of positivity and the world needs more of that anyways right now. So for me, I think that this is just more about the safety, the well-being of the pet. And I think everything else will take care of itself. Oh, oh. Go, ahead, go, go ahead, Robin. I was going to say, so Susan had talked a little bit about how you talk to your employees about it and that they were willing to give it a try and all that. How did you go about introducing it to your client base? Because you already had a grooming salon up and running. So mm -hmm. how did you roll it out to your clients and then raise your prices at the same time? And how did they respond? The good thing was I was coming up at the price increase around the same time <laughs> I was doing the official rollout. So I included it in there. So that kind of went in my favor. And then we just adjust accordingly if someone needs it. But we had a receptionist. And what I did is I actually spoke to my staff 
about what I'm talking to you guys, the benefits and a lot of stuff that I learned from the dog gurus. <laughs> and I have my staff on dog gurus college too, which really helps because you guys took care of a lot of the ex explanation, a lot of it. But when I talked to them about it and I told them like what we need to do and how we do it, they were just very, if this makes our job easier, we're all for it. And, and they said, we'll try it. And none of us even knew if it was going to work. Like we were piling a whole program like we didn't know because they were still like peanut butter and a clean dog like, <laughs> are you crazy we just watched this dog and now you want to put peanut butter on the dog's face and yeah. now they're like it's really not that bad because it's not like you're slopping peanut butter all over the dog's face they're licking it off a licking mat there's worse things you can do so once they started doing it and then they saw how much happier the dogs were they took to it automatically. And I'm sure for, if there's business owners out there listening to this and they're worried about that pushback, I will be happy to send anybody the videos that I have. Because I think when you hear someone talking about it and when you can actually see it, I do think people are going to be a little bit more open-minded to it, number one. But I'm, I'm not someone that hasn't experienced it. I have ex I'm experiencing it. I'm doing it and I'm telling you, you might just take a few minutes on one groom, but every time you get in there, it's going to be easier and easier. And like you guys always say, it's harder to find new clients and it is to retain clients. Mm -hmm. Keep those clients coming in, build that relationship. They're probably going to refer you just because you are working so well with their pet. So now you just got another client based off of what you're doing and, you, and you're going to have such a better time with your with those animals and cats we're actually finding we didn't think cats were gonna go for it and cats we're doing more and more with cats now too awesome. and anybody out there that, that does cat grooming i know a lot of room shops don't do it because it's a very stressful situation we're finding good results with cats too That's what kind of amazing. tools are you using with we're using like lo those little swing toys with the mice and yeah and chasing around and that kind of thing we do that sometimes with them because we're just trying to bring like that fear out of them and being upset. They really like those salmon liver treats they're finding. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of things, not so much like the scratching post, but we, we, we were going to experience with a yoga mat because they do like to scratch and paw at that just to release some of that, that stress and stuff like that. So cats were still working on, but because <laughs> we didn't think it was going to work at all, but we're finding good development with that as well, which is, is great. So good for you. Look how creative you are now. I know you told me a story at the IDPSA conference that just touched me because I know you make this optional, but there are times where you've required it, right? Because mm -hmm. it's best for the dog as well as you. Could you just recap that situation? And Are what you, you talking about the Black Russian Terrier? Yes, I am. Because okay. I love the story. It just... <laughs> I love the story, but I did not like the experience. Let's put that I can believe that, yeah. So I had a client come in and he has a black Russian terrier. So if anyone doesn't know what a black Russian terrier is, look it up. It's a big dog. It's actually a Russian war dog. So if that will tell you it's a big dog. It's a serious dog. Okay. And this dog met business. So this dog was 13 or 14 months old when he first started coming to me. He already had four groomers and pretty much got kicked out of every place he ever got into it. And a lot of it 14 was, months old, he'd been through four groomers. Yes. Oh my yes. gosh. When the guy came, when the gentleman came in, he came in and he was not very optimistic that we were going to be able to do this dog, which didn't build real confidence in me, but I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll, I'm crazy. I'll do it. Let's try it. So when I got this dog on my table, he actually broke my arm off which i've had this table a long time but it wasn't like it was falling apart clean broke the table arm knocked over the grooming table was trying to bite this dog was like a nightmare at first oh my and gosh. so i was like there's got to be a way there's just got to be a way so we slowly started working with him and it took four groomers that day and i know if you're a groomer out there you're thinking i just would have sent that dog home and believe me, I wanted to, but I'm the type of person that I really got to give the dogs a chance. I really feel like some of these dogs are just misunderstood. And if I was the last one to try to do it and I accomplished something, that that's great. So I I really wanted to 
accomplish this as a groomer. We started using like liver treats and keep them on the table with the brushing and he was real resistant on everything. Then we got him into the bathtub and when we got, cause I had to pre-shave him cause he was matted and stuff. When I got him into the bathtub, we thought the plumbing was going to come out of the wall. That is how all over this dog was and pawing at your face and just all over the place. We've been doing the enrichment grooming with him every time he comes in once a month. And when, when his dad came in, he was like, you don't want him back, do you? I'm like, oh yeah, broken table and all. You can look <laughs> at me. And I said, but this is my price. And I told him my price and he said, that's going to be your price. And I said, yeah, if you want me to work with your dog, unfortunately it's going to cost you. You, you got a Russian war dog here. And I'm not <laughs> So every, every time he comes in though, we use different, like we started off with the liver treats and then we use the, the licky mat. And now we're to the point where I can bathe him by myself and he sits great. I can groom him by myself. And this has only been, I think he's been in five or six times. So you're talking five or six months and we've already gotten to the point with him. He's not perfect, but he is to the point where we can groom him comfortably, safely, and honestly, it's worth it. But I, I do charge it. Well, a lot of people know, don't do that for free because nobody else is gonna, no one else is gonna do it. His next option is gonna be taken with a vet where they're gonna knock him out. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? And you don't wanna keep knocking a puppy out at 14, 15 months, two years old. What kind of, what is that? So this can work for aggressive dogs, scared dogs, older dogs, cats, a wide range of animals you can reach out to with this and make happy. In fact, I have a horse and where I am at the barn, she wants us to come up with activities for the horses now. Enrichment farrier. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be another project I have to, I'm not there yet though. <laughs> All right. Jamie did have another question. She sure. said, have you done any videos for clients on what a grooming session looks like with enrichment? Yeah. Anytime that I do something, I, I have actually many videos. I have Ralph, he's a black Russian. Every time he comes in, I take a video, whether it's the bathing or the grooming part to show the, what we're accomplishing. And because they probably want to know, like, they're not there grooming. They don't know what's going on. They just pick up the dog and they just see a haircut. You know what I mean? So they're thinking, is it worth spending all this money? Why am I spending all this money? Especially in the economy right now, people are watching their dollars. So they want to know what am I getting for this? So videos are great to have. We got, we send pets videos of pets where they're just at the shop and their parents might be a little nervous because they left because they're a first time person and we show them having fun. And we, we put out pictures on our Facebook and we really try to communicate with our clients as much as possible that this is a good thing for their pets. This is a good environment. It's not just like bath cut cage home. Like we are really interactive and people really appreciate that. They really do. Especially these days when people are closer to their pets than ever before. That's so true. That's so true. What would you say? Cause we're getting ready to about wrap it up in a few minutes, but I wanted to ask if you had somebody that, you know, was interested in getting started in this and trying to implement enrichment into their grooming salon, what is their first steps? What should do they start doing to try this out? Okay. So first what I would do, if you're really thinking about becoming a grooming enrichment based shop salon, first of all, you want to make sure you have your paperwork when you have your, you, and you can either do this one of two ways. If you need to do it every time they come in, you want the paperwork. So that way you're protective of any kind of treats. You want to make sure that you have pets, per, you know, parental permission for the pets, what they can eat. And because with that, anything you want to just make sure, like what if the dog eats something and the owner doesn't know they're allergic and something happened, what did you get my dog or on your taken forms? This is what we're going to end up doing. All of our taken forms, when they come in, they're going to sign it and they're going to know that we're an enrichment based grooming salon. And this is what can happen during the grooming. We might need to use a toy. We might need to feed him a treat. And we just want to make sure you're okay with that. You know what I mean? Or do you have a preference if you don't want us to use something? So first I would find out what kind of paperwork you want to get started for your clients. And I would start with, you can try aggressive, but I started with the easier dogs first because I didn't want 
my staff to be like, this ain't going to work and that's it. So we started with, with easy fundamentals. So we started with the licky mats first. I bought those licky mats and they were only like eight bucks and a thing of peanut butter. And of course you got to make sure it's dog safe, pet safe peanut butter or those Kong thing where they have those different kind of Kong yeah. things, that kind of thing. And we started with Kong treats because we wanted to make sure that pets really liked it. Then we did the snuffle mats and the tea touch. Um, the tea touch, I know we mentioned a place where you can find it. There's a lady, she's called the oily groomer and she specializes in tea touch. Okay. If you go over to her, she'll be happy. She'll, she'll, she'll do that video. It shows you what tea touch is if you're unfamiliar, but, but like I said, the peanut butter and the leaky mat, that's a great place to start. And then you add, now I find myself always going everywhere looking for different enrichment activities. <laughs> and now I have to buy this big toy box thing just to hold them all in. <laughs> And the great thing is it's not expensive. It does not really take that much time. It's going to add to your bottom line. It's going to make your groomers happier. It's going to make your staff happier. It's going to make the dogs happier and your clients. So it's going to make you happier too, because you're going to have a better environment and you're going to feel good. They're going to feel good. I'm very passionate about this. And I hope that came through today. <laughs> so for your business, Samantha, and you said that you build it into a price increase and you still have it as an add-on option. I mean, you don't have to give us numbers, but percentages are just from a business perspective. How has it been? Okay. So I don't mind giving numbers. So for our basic, when we first started basically mat type of thing that you'd have in your uh, crate or in your enclosure while you were waiting, or if you had to add it just as simple, that would start anywhere for small to large dogs between five and ten dollars. You want to price in that you're using, even though you're still using the same lick mat, and always disinfect your lick mats. And your, I want to make sure I get that out before I forget because you want to make sure you're disinfecting that. But you're going to be using maybe more treats, more peanut butter, depending on the dog. And sometimes they might take a while to use it, and sometimes they lick it up right away. So anywhere between five and ten dollars per nourishment activity. And then if I'm doing like a training thing where I have to base it into the groom for a training that really gets based on as a handling fee. And I charge an, a per minute slash per hourly price into my thing. Now, and depending on what the magnitude, like the black rush interior, obviously that was a lot more difficult than having a dog that just might not like its nails done. So you really need to go back to what you think you need to make price wise per hour and you have to make sure you factor that in because what i do for grooming and who i am grooming isn't going to be the same as another groomer even in my own shop i can groom a dog in 30 minutes after the wash and dried and i have groomers that might be an hour 15 minutes so you really need to know what your hourly base pay for yourself is and that's what you should be making. And if you could be grooming another dog in that time, you need to make sure that is priced into your, your thing. And if it's going to be something like, I don't want to charge my clients that they might have to have a choice. You can either pay me to do this, or you have to pick your pet up nine times out of 10, they're going to say, no, I'll pay you. Let's try it. If it's an aggressive dog, or even like a dog that's been turned away, or some people just, yeah, do what you got to do. I just want my pet to be happy. People are willing to pay if they know that there's a benefit behind it. Yeah. And I think that's so critical because two things, one is the common thought that well, I'm going to lose money because now I can't groom as many dogs. You definitely want to price it so that if it's taking you a little bit longer, initially that cup, that fee is covered. But I also think that those dogs where you might have to charge a really high amount are going to be dogs that aren't getting groomed at all anywhere. <laughs> and so most right. likely the pet parent is going to pay for that. But I also think today's society and Susan and I see this in the pet industry overall, today's pet parent, at least in the United States, is much more discerning and much more willing to spend money on their pet when they know their pet is being handled well, not using for fear-free tactics are really big right now. So making sure that you're doing that. And this is all in line with all those positive methods of handling, having fun, making the dog relaxed and comfortable, and not just getting the dog in there and grooming them no matter how the dog feels about it. I think pet parents really are looking for that and they're willing to pay for that because those types of services sometimes can be hard to find. So I would definitely say that every grooming shop should start trending this way because I think that's really where 
pet parents want their dogs to be in those kinds of places. And I got to say, I think the grooming industry in general is going towards this way as well, because years ago when I first started, you would go to a groom show and it was about the different haircuts on a beagle. Yeah, beagle, young beagles. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> Are you sure you're a groomer, Samantha? No, I don't know. After that comment, maybe I'm not. Um, a bit, I would say Bashan, a Bashan, a poodle. Those are the kind of things you would see at a grooming salon, a grooming show. Now you're seeing massage, tea touch. You're seeing like holistic books out there. The mindset of the grooming industry and the groomer itself is even changing. And I think it's a really good change. And I'm so happy to see it because I really think in order to attract more groomers and to attract people to our industry, you have to make it where they don't, hey, look at all the dog bites I got today. It's not like a reward to get bit. It's not a badge of honor. You know what I mean? Like you don't want that. You want them to be like, I had this great day. I got gained the confidence of this little puppy. And it was like so awesome because they gave me a kid with me or gave me a hug or whatever. And it does happen. And it's a really good feeling to have at the end of the day. That is awesome. It's amazing. I am so proud of what you've done with, like you said, our challenge. We challenge you to go find more revenue and you're creating a movement in industry. And I'm just grateful that you have done this success and come back to share it with everybody. You're going to make me cry again, aren't you, Susan? <laughs> it is. It is amazing. I will say that Samantha, you and you have been the topic of me and Susan, several of our conversations where we're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And it is. And I love that. I do think that this can be a huge movement towards enrichment in the grooming industry. And I love that you took what we said and said, how can I make this? And then not only that, I love that you tried something that we recommended, but what I really love is that you you saw how much it helped the dogs and that at the base of everything you do is that love for the dogs and that love for making things good for the dogs, which is what Susan and I are all about is let's all make life better for dogs. And mm -hmm. so being able to do that, I think is wonderful. We are amazed at at what you've done and love having you on here. And we're so happy that you're willing to share your ideas. And I did put a link to your website in the comments as well. So if people want to check out yes. uh, Samantha's website or contact her, definitely do that. But my, I, the videos are on my business websites. If you can check on her videos and some of them, like most of them are on there at the update, but they can just get a little piece of even looking at it. Because when I show people, they're like, wow, they're amazed. And I, I really hope that, I really hope that people at least try, don't knock it till you try it. I hope that they at least try something. And like I said, it's not going to cost that much. You're not going to lose money on the simple licky man and a little peanut butter thing. And if anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to help you. I, I really want this to become a grooming industry standard. And if I can help anybody out there, even if it's one groomer, I am here. I'll be happy to share or help you in any way I can. 